In Windchill, you can create variances, including deviations and waivers, to track how the build of a real-world object differs from the engineering definition. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am starting on an assembly, a CAD document in Windchill, but you can start a deviation or a waiver from multiple different locations. Maybe you'll do it from a WT part. You could even do it from a folder. Hey, you decide according to your business rules. So to create the new variance, I will go to the Actions drop-down menu, and then here we have the new command. You can see a variety of different objects here, and the third choice is a variance. I will click on that, and it will open up a dialog box. And so at the top, you have a drop-down list where you can choose whether this is a deviation or a waiver. And the difference between the two, well, a deviation is when you are going to make a change before the build has started. And then a waiver is when you're going to make a change from the engineering definition after the build has started or when maybe the build has already completed and you want people to sign off on it. So, for example, let's do a deviation. And we're going to say that the name of this deviation is that we are going to not include LRU-3489. And here I have myself listed as the owner for the category. By default, we have critical, major, and minor. I'm going to leave this as minor. Then you can specify whether this is recurring or not. I'll say, yes, this is recurring. And that's all I need to fill out on the set attributes form. But let's see what other information that we have. Here we have a need date. And so for this one, I'll say, hey, we need this approved by, say, next Wednesday. And then we have a description. So there I put in the description. If I scroll down, you also have a reason field where you could put in other additional information as needed. Here we have the approved quantity. Hey, let's say that we are going to do this. I say for the next 20 of this article that we are going to build. That's good for the set attributes page. I will click the next button. And then we have impacts that you can fill in here. So we have corrective action, effect on cost, effect on schedule, and effect on support. Fill them in as necessary. Then I will go to the next button. We can choose the affected end items if we want to list them. And I can use the plus sign to open up a search form. And then I can say, hey, let's search for the number. And I'm going to do some keywords. Let's hit the search button. And I find the end item. You can see it's the end item because it is indicated by the symbol of a WT part, a gray gear, with a little blue diamond on it. I'll click the OK button. And now let's grab the form, make it a little bit longer. So we have our end item listed in here. You can write in any other additional comments that you want. Let's click the Next button. And then we have our affected objects. And this is listing the object from which I started the variance. If you start this from a folder, maybe you're going to use the search button to add items in here. Also, if I wanted to add other additional items to this list, I could do that as well. And again, we have another field here for approved quantity. Let's just plug in the same number. Let's now click on the next button. Then we could set attachments. And we have three different kinds of attachments. The first one is for any kind of document. Maybe you have a PDF. Maybe you have some different image files. Whatever, you can attach those as well. Then the next one is a URL link. And the third kind of object that you can attach over here is external storage. And that's basically a description of a location in the real world where you might want someone to go get a physical artifact that they need to reference. And then we can click the next button and get to the last page of the form, which is for select associations. So I could add in associated process objects. Maybe I have something like a problem report or a change request that I want to add into this variance. 
and then we have associated reference objects any other objects maybe we have a CAD document maybe we have a WT part maybe we have a vendor part a manufacturer part or some other kind of document that we want to associate with this particular variant everything here is good let's click the finish button and now we have the option to submit now or submit later so maybe I just filled out some of it I want to come back later when I have more information I could choose submit later but I'm happy with how this is so I'll click on submit now and we can see that the deviation was created from the toaster I can click on the link for it and here we can see the deviation form which has all the information that I have filled in here you can scroll down and see the different tables of information and you have links to them as well if you go to the process tab here we can see that it's going to be sent to a change admin one here we have the related tasks and then you have the history field as well if I go to the actions drop down menu from here we could go to new and actually create a new change request from this particular deviation in this system I am also a change admin one so if I go to my home page and go to my tasks here I have a task to approve the variance I will click on the task and so here I have the instructions in here a variance requires your approval review the variance details review the identif identified objects click approve or reject enter comments and then complete the task and it's got links to the variance then here I can choose hey either we're going to approve it reject it or rework in this case I say yep there's nothing that we can do if we want to proceed with the build this is what we're going to do so with the approve radio button selected I will click the complete task and I no longer have that task assigned to me and then let's go to the recently accessed list and I can go to the variance itself and we can see in the history that it is now under the state of approved and again we have all the other relevant information regarding this particular deviation so again in windchill you can create variances and they can either be deviations or waivers deviations for changes that you're making before the build and waivers for changes that you're making after i hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.